Hello, I'm John Powley, and welcome to part three, which is the last part of this podcast series on white structures in dermoscopy. We will now have a look at some white structures which are found slightly more often in malignant and pre-malignant skin lesions during dermoscopic examination. And we'll start off with the negative network. In the lesion shown here to the right, we can clearly recognize the typical pigment network which characterizes junction nevi. The network is composed of fine brown lines with pale or very light colored holes. However, in some melanoma in situ lesions and thin invasive melanomas, we can find a structure known as the negative network. This is the opposite of the pigment network, so instead we find white or pale lines surrounding brown clods or globules. This pattern may even remind us of a giraffe's fur. The negative network can be seen within the circle in the lesion to the left. One must not confuse the global pattern known as the cobblestone pattern with a negative network. In the case on the left hand side, the clods of this congenital nevus are surrounded by whitish or pale lines just like in the negative network, but they cover the totality of the lesion. A true negative network, as seen in the case on the right, only covers part of the lesion. This one turned out to be a melanoma in situ. Some white structures can only be discerned when using polarized light. Lieben et al. published this article in 2012 describe, describing three different white shiny structures. White shiny lines, white shiny areas, and rosettes. White shiny lines are also known as crystalline structures. These are relatively short, straight, white lines that are oriented parallel or perpendicular to each other. According to Dr. Ashfaq Margoub, who also has an excellent podcast dedicated to these structures, these shiny white lines are believed to represent new or remodeled collagen, which can be visualized only with polarized light due to the birefringent properties of collagen. They can be seen in melanomas, spitz nevi, dermatofibromas, BCCs, SECs, and lichen like keratoses, uh, among others. White shiny areas, which are most frequently seen in BCCs, are shiny white clods or shiny structureless areas only seen with polarized light. Lastly, rosettes are small groups of four small white shiny dots organized in a formation that resembles a four-leaf clover. They are mainly found in premalignant and malignant keratinizing tumors such as AKs and squamous cell carcinomas, and they are believed to be due to keratin filling the follicular openings. Here is a typical example of white shiny lines in an invasive malignant melanoma. In this case, the crystalline structures can be seen within the blue-white veil, but also in areas of brown pigment network at the periphery. Here is another example of an invasive melanoma exhibiting white shiny lines mainly within the area of the tumor with greater thickness. As mentioned previously, white shiny lines can also be seen in spitz nevi, for example. Another clue to a melanocytic lesion in this case are the dotted vessels that can be seen apart from the crystalline structures. In this image, we see bright, shiny, white clods or structureless areas in combination with typical branched vessels. Both findings point us to the diagnosis of a basal cell carcinoma. Here's another BCC with branched vessels in combination with multiple white, shiny areas or clods. Although more common in basal cell carcinomas, white, shiny areas may also be seen in other lesions, including melanoma, as seen here. In this picture from Lieben et al's article, you can clearly see the four small dots in clover-like formations known as rosettes. In this case, the diagnosis was squamous cell carcinoma. The last three white structures I want to present in this podcast are commonly observed in Bowen's disease, keratoconthomas, and squamous cell carcinomas. These white structures are white circles, central keratin masses, and white structureless areas, or zones. You can read more about these structures in these articles by Rosen Dolladal and Salauda Kedal. The dermoscopic criteria of white circles, which are also described by Salauda Kedal as targetoid hair follicles, are quite specific for keratoconthoma and squamous cell carcinoma. In this example from Rosen Dolladal's article, white circles can be clearly discerned surrounding yellow to light brown structureless areas corresponding to keratin plugs within the hair follicles. This case, case is very illustrative since the white circles are the main dermoscopic finding and may help us suspect the correct diagnosis, which is, of course, squamous cell carcinoma. Although very specific, white circles around yellowish structureless areas can also be seen in molluscum contagiosum, as shown here. 
Of course, the differential diagnosis can be made easily thanks to the clinical image in most cases. Nevertheless, it can be of interest to point out another dermoscopic finding found in molluscum, which are the typical crown vessels as pointed out by the arrows. White circles, as pointed out here with arrowheads, are very commonly seen in squamous cell carcinomas in combination with central keratin masses. This keratin may be both white and yellow in color. The black arrowheads are pointing at some of the many white circles observed in this case. Here we have two cases of hyperkeratotic bones disease transforming into microinvasive squamous cell carcinomas. They have central keratin masses surrounded by clusters of typical glomerular vessels. Another common dermoscopic criteria seen within the keratin masses are the reddish-black blood spots as exemplified by the case on the right. Again, another case of SEC on the leg of an elderly woman presenting with white circles and a whitish-yellow central keratin mass with the typical blood spots which have been highlighted. The last white dermoscopic criteria which can also be found in keratoconsoma and squamous cell carcinoma are the white structuralist areas, or zones. These are common in the raised parts of these tumors surrounding the central keratin mass. When we zoom in to take a closer look at these white structuralist areas, you can see that there are multiple hairpin vessels in these areas. Besides this, we can also see the typical blood spots within the central keratin and even a few white circles. Alas, the diagnosis of keratoconsoma or highly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma is clear cut. I hope you have enjoyed this three-part podcast series on white structures in dermoscopy. Thank you very much for your attention.